Which is worse, women in the workforce or rape? My video here is actually a reply to a reply, more or less. And I have a very specific target audience, and I'll explain that now. There's a guy named, uh, he goes by the name uh, Vox Populi, popular voice, but uh, Vox Day. And he made a blog entry called Mailvox, which is worse, work or rape. And then a girl named Daniel Parody made a response to him, just a very short video where she called him insensitive. It's enough for now to say that. My target audience are the people who responded to Danielle's Where the weed at? Uh. That's fine. My target audience are the people who responded to Danielle's video in the comments section saying that she didn't refute Vox's point. It's important enough to make a video about this. More on that in a minute. First, I'm going to read Vox's email. Then I may refer back to Daniel's video, but I'm going to, as I read it, I'll put a link to the um, blog so you can follow along. I'm going to read it and just interject my perspective. Hola. I'm going to interject my perspective as we go. So Vox Populi, Mail Vox, Vox Day says the following. A drive-by commenter throws out a few points. Quote, women don't have to stay home and breed simply because it intimidates you that we're in the workforce. What about the fact that women may wish to work and be very, very capable of doing so? Are you saying women are less intelligent than men? Is there any reason that a man couldn't stay home and provide childcare if that is best suited to the family? End quote. And then Vox replies to this person, saying, one, true, women don't have to stay home and breed because it intimidates anyone that they are in the workforce. About two-thirds of them have to stay home and breed in order to prevent society from either collapsing into demographic and economic ruin or being transformed by the imported replacement workers into the third world society being transformed into a third world society by imported replacement workers. I'll finish this paragraph and then get back to that. The birth rate has already fallen well below replacement level without the rate of female employment even drawing completely even with male employment rate. One wonders how long it would go if all women were required to enter the workforce. I'm not going to just name drop logical fallacies here. I tell plenty of people that's not useful. You really need to explain the logical lapses. You can use the fallacies if you want, but if one or the other, you should go with the explanation. So I'm going to explain, for example, about two thirds of women have to stay home in order to, to breed in order to prevent society from collapsing. Not really. You can actually have children and then work. You can have children and raise them and work. Families can have businesses. Simply, that's entirely illogical to say that women have to stay home in order to have kids, stay home in order to raise kids. Further, uh, econ uh, demographic and economic ruin transformed into a third world society by importing replacement workers, importing replacement workers from third world societies. Another logical fallacy, I'll simply explain it though. The third world in large part still exists despite technological advances because of the supposed first world. Someone doing the day-to-days of a person who's too important to do their own day-to-days, too important to live in balance, someone else having to wash their clothes, file their taxes, file their nails. One aspect of a third world country is to do for yourself. The commodification of people, the assembly line manufacturing for everything, specialization of everything. So that's your thing. You work at the DMV. You're a DMV worker. Soy DMV worker. And other people are going to come in and replace the 
women who, you know, for example, we can do it, and they're going to they're gonna fight for the war machine. What if they're simply uh, making communities more sustainable? Making the children, what if their job is to nurture children? Yeah, they can nurture their own children in the process. So simply the idea of we're going to fall into a third world society, one, keep in mind that Third world societies could be easily lifted up if we didn't have a silly, ridiculous, reckless, unsustainable sense or perspective on what it means to be successful over consumption, for example. And this isn't me saying we shouldn't. Let's go ahead and do it. But now that we've done so much of this, we don't make stuff. I'm talking about the United States here. The United States doesn't make stuff. And now trillion dollars of our debt is over somewhere that used to make stuff, meaning China. Now their wages are being raised. Eventually those jobs will come back to America because it'll be too expensive to pay Chinese workers because they're going to be elevated. And so we'll be stuck helping to create a world economy where somebody has to work a sweatshop because we need Nikes, iPads and other frivolous bullshit, even at the expense of other people's livelihood. So simply the idea that women have to breed or else you know, the third world is going to come to America's doorstep specifically. I don't know where Vox is from and Danielle is from Canada. You know, it'll come to the West. Uh, one can look at London, Londonistan if one requires an example of this process is what Vox says next. And then he, he quotes and he puts in brackets a capitalization of the four. One of the points I wanted to make is that this is the kind of person, Vox, that thinks like MLA formatting is more important than critical thinking. No, you see, because I made a quote, but the original F wasn't, wasn't um, capitalized, but I'm, but I'm such a stickler for detail that I put in brackets that I capitalized it so that I'm, I'm being com completely forthcoming about, about the way that I use the data. No, no, no. You, you're shit at critical thinking and you've been taught to make up for it by, by technically correct sourcing. More on that later. For the first time, white Britons are now in a are now in a minority, are now a minority in the country's largest city. It is a London newspaper. White Britons now make up 45% of the population, compared with 51, 58% in 2001. London's population has been boosted by immigrants. Three million foreign-born people now live in the capital. End quote. So that's his. That's the example of um, it being unsustainable for women to work because third world people are going to come in and be replacement workers. Therefore, women shouldn't work. Therefore, we can't have a society where women can be mothers and work or where families can all work. More on this in a minute. We'll get there. Number two point for Vox. The fact that women may wish to work and be very capable of working no more implies that they should always be encouraged to do so any more than the fact that men may wish to rape and are very capable of raping means that they should always be encouraged to do so. This is the point that Danielle made her video about. It's a very short video just saying that this was insensitive. And here it is. The ironic but logically inescapable fact is that encouraging men to rape would be considerably less damaging to a society than encouraging women to enter the workforce in mass. Widespread rape makes a culture, makes a society uncivilized. Widespread female employment makes a society demographically unstable. History demonstrates that incivility can be survived and surmounted. Unsustainability, on the other hand, cannot be survived and unsurmounted. So history demonstrates, well, isn't that amazing? Go ahead, give some examples of where you can surmount and survive a level of incivility to inculcate the idea that you can rape. Even the Bible, in all its foolish glory and all its appeal to suppose appeal to people. They don't buy into that. If someone rapes your daughter, 
they have to give you 50 pieces of silver and then they get to marry her. Not even the Bible's hold is strong enough, much less your evocation of, well, history demonstrates. Show me a society that could be sustainable allowing rape. We can get into Immanuel Kant's categorical imperatives of how if you socialize people to believe they can rape, that will be the order of the day. You will absolutely devolve into a, a society where women do nothing but avoid getting raped. Men get the women only if they can provide them not getting raped. And for example, you have fathers like me. I have three daughters and two sons. Danielle Parody in her video graciously she's a feminist so she would and I'm, I'm betting she would assume that most people that get raped are women but she graciously included that Vox was insensitive to women and men by relatively trivializing rape she said that you're insensitive to, to rape victims that are men and women throwing men and women together fathers like me have sons and daughters you socialize people to rape my sons and daughters or even just to harm them someone comes up doing that let me give you an example they come up doing that I would be entirely willing to bite their eyes off if I thought that's what it took to protect my kids. Now I know people are thinking, well that's just, that's hyperbolic and I'm just kind of saying that to, for effect. No, you're here at the internet, you'll say that now. No, actually I would. But it gets better. I would train my sons and daughters to bite your eyes out if you tried to rape them. And I know you're thinking I just kind of made this bite the eyes thing, you know, just for effect or something. And it was the, the weirdest thing I could come up with. Actually, um, one of the things that I've spent a fair amount of my life doing is teaching self-defense courses, especially to women, but not because they're women, just because they're the ones that come, but teaching self-defense courses. And one of the things you teach people in self-defense is do whatever you need to do to keep yourself safe if you're being attacked. So, for example, somebody gets a hold of you and you're here. You don't try to pull away, you come closer to them. You bite whatever the fuck you can. Ideally, you bite their throat, their nose, or their eyes. So I didn't just pull it out of nowhere. The fact is, if you want an unsustainable culture, tell anyone they're allowed to rape women or be so insensitive to men. You wonder why society isn't getting out of the various funks and uncivilized situations that we are? We socialize people to believe that you can be torturous to men. So we get a whole huge subset of men who are as insensitive as people have been raised to be towards them. And everyone receives a detriment because of that. So the idea that, oh, we can, we can surmount and survive socializing the idea that rape's okay. Well, again, this is another fallacy. I'll just explain it. The idea that as a social construct, rape being okay, yeah, that society could be destroyed and the world would survive just like these hippie um, environmentalists saying like we're gonna save the earth by recycling this like George Carlin pointed out the earth will be fine you're gonna die worst case scenario so you socialize people to believe they can rape women and that society that socialized that way yes it will be destroyed it will not further but society in the world will keep going so it's simply a logical fallacy to say that you can socialize people this way. No, that society will fall by the wayside and a society that doesn't allow rape will take its place. If for no other reason that with the high-tech weaponry you'll have twice as many soldiers willing to fight for this, you know, fight against that culture for land and other resources, like, hey, men and women, let's get together and, you know, who should we take out and take their land? Well, it seems like we can all get behind taking out the, the woman rape culture. But I know, let me pause for a second to point out that, that Vox Day, uh, on his Twitter, he, he calls himself uh, Internet Super Intelligence, award-winning cruelty artist, novelist, and game designer, and is corny as fuck, and he, he's a gimp, and he is an example of the kind of people who appreciate IQ tests, who, who he's going to start mentioning standard deviations and all this kind of nonsense. The kind of people who, again, they, they appreciate MLA formatting more than critical thinking. The kind of people who... They, they developed their minds so much that they lose their soul and they are those troll by design, socially engineered to be trolls where it's like, no, no, I don't really think this, but I'm going to say it because it's, it's wacky and it'll piss a lot of people off. Well, no, there's a grain of truth in it, so everyone should sift through a bucket of shit for that grain of truth. That's like the Bible. There's some good stuff in there, yeah, with a whole lot of nonsense over it. So this kind of person, I 
pointed out, this is he's not my target audience. I'm not like, hey, Vox, let me let me explain where you don't make sense and you're loaded with logical fallacies. And no, not my target audience. Daniela is not my target audience. My target audience are the people in the comment section, and people will think that's crazy. Plenty. Why would you talk to them? They're just trolls, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. No, they're not saying trollish things. They're saying you didn't prove Vox wrong. And really, of course, I'm not addressing them. I'm addressing this mindset of you say something like rape is not as bad as women working. And then a woman or anyone, but we'll say Danielle Parody comes in gently, calmly, this time just in text, but she's a gentle, calm person. Sometimes not. I know, Danielle, geez, I'm not trying to pigeonhole you, but gently, calmly, respectfully saying like, oh, that's uh, pretty insensitive. And then you get these people, well, he's not wrong. Now let me bring it a little further back. Plenty of people, just by me addressing this video and, and it's part of something Danielle has done, are going to be saying, oh, he's a white knight. He's coming in to protect Danielle. He's fighting her battles, all this kind of stuff. I've already said, I don't care about Danielle in the context of these things. If she said something I didn't agree with, I wouldn't be, well, she's a girl though. As some people would say in comment sections, you're just trying to get fuck her by agreeing with her. Right. I'm not being sarcastic at all when I say I totally understand that plenty of people have been socialized to where they would never stand up for anyone unless they had a chance to get laid or paid. What the hell's the point of defending a woman? You know, she's not going to fuck you. Meanwhile, not, I'm, not only am I not that kind of weak-minded, cowardly, unprincipled person, but as I pointed out, I'm not defending Danielle. I am addressing an idea put forth by a polite, reasonable person and getting this response, and let me say again, has nothing to do with her, but when you have somebody trying to give you peaceful revolution or peaceful way to think about something and your first response is, yeah, right, you didn't prove him wrong, we could socialize people to rape you and you know, we'd, get, we'd get over it. When you make polite, peaceful revolution impossible, as it said, you make violent revolution inevitable. You make fathers have to teach their sons and daughters not how to go into the workforce if you choose, or keep your mind open to math and science. You teach them if somebody tries to rape you, which is the law of the land they can, eat their eyes. Eat them. Don't just bite them off because then they can be reattached. Eat their eyes. So we don't want that. We don't want to have to teach our kids to eat people's eyes. And uh, moving on. Um, three, are women less intelligent than men? Vox asks. Average, no. In terms of highest standard deviations, yes. Again, this is the wow, hey. Toss out terms, and I know he's got his audience, so that's not above their heads. But simply, let's not talk in terms of... of uh, averages, means, medians, or in terms of standard deviations. Let's talk about potential. In terms of standard deviations, yes. Well, then let's just address that, even though it was sort of an aside. Standard deviations, meaning the best of the best are better than the best of the best. Potential. An Olympic runner who's male is going to be much faster than an Olympic runner that's female. We're talking like three-tenths of a second faster, and that's a lot. Now, an Olympic female who runs compared to a man who doesn't run? The point is that your potential has a lot more to do with what you're allowed and encouraged to do than your genitalia. A trained woman will outdo an untrained man. So you set up this self-fulfilling prophecy of, oh, women are just stupid and have shit priorities, and they don't think, and they're not reasonable. No, 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 don't, don't think. Don't be reasonable. No, 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 no. Put on pink. That's what you like. No, no, don't think in that way. No, wear a dress. Don't run. Don't... And um, so standard deviations, no, let's consider potential. However, I think it's readily apparent that both men and women are to blame for constructing an equalitarian society that in terms of intelligence doesn't even rise to the ability of a dog to avoid defecating on its own bed and staying off the railroad tracks. Now, again, I mean, this is, this is the super intelligence, award-winning cruelty, like I'm amazed and funny. No, he meant that as a joke. It's tongue in I don't give a fuck. It's stupid as hell, and anybody thinking this needs more of a refutation than you're being insensitive, you're, you're contributing to a society that people apparently wouldn't really want. 
would you want it to be reasonable for no woman to ever think they should just try to reason with you and say you're insensitive? No Daniel parodies existing. Instead, women socialize in a society that believes they can be raped. You know what those women would be like? You know the hypocritical, the most hypocritical men's rights movement people, etc., who say, women act this way, women are mean in this way. You know you would have no footing whatsoever to say anything about any kind of child killing woman, abortion rights, any of that kind of stuff, if you socialize women to where it's okay to rape them. Only the murderous or those willing to be murderous or highly aggressive would survive. You wouldn't have time to talk about silly, stupid, shaved, shiny women, as I often do. You'd be talking about, whoa, that woman, you know, overstepped her bounds. That guy was trying to approach her nicely. She shouldn't have assumed he was trying to rape her and eat his eyes because he was just approaching her nice. And then a reasonable person would have to say, well, yeah, but to be fair, we live in a society where it's okay to rape women. So she had every right to fear that this might be somebody who's going to act on that legality. These are the extensions of the idea that, no, we'll sustain through a culture that socializes people to rape. You wouldn't be raping my kids, sons or daughters. You wouldn't be raping, there's a lot of dads. This is about me. Dads will eat your eyes if they think that's the only way to keep you from raping their kids. You know, so consider that. Oh, and the equalitarian society in terms of intelligence uh, doesn't rise to the ability of a dog to not defecate. And again, that's stupid and corny, but it's not even accurate. I mean, we have a, a equalitarian society somewhat, arguably, in, in plenty of ways. And in terms of intelligence, yeah, we generally don't defecate on our beds and we stay off of railroad tracks. So it doesn't even fit. Oh, well, dude, you, you addressed it. He was saying that as a joke. It was just, no, it was, it was yes, I know. Just like... John Stewart is, is really funny and insightful. So when he says something stupid, that doesn't make any sense. No, he's a comedian. But when he says something you think is profound, whoa, I would vote for him for president. This kind of half-ass, say some things that are funny, and then, you know, oh, I have plausible deniability. No, that time I wasn't just being stupid and illogical. That time I was, it was just a joke. So simply, yeah, we, we generally don't shit on our beds or, and we stay off of railroad tracks. So the statement doesn't even, doesn't even apply or doesn't follow. And then fourth and last point is, Yes, there are a number of reasons that a man cannot stay home and provide childcare. This is where it just gets way um, begged questions. And if you think you know what a begged question is and you're not up on your logical fallacies, look up the logical fallacy of begged question because begged question does not mean you evoked a question that should be asked. It's not it. There's a whole lot of begged questions here. That's all I'll say. Now I'll explain the actual logical lapses. A lot of reasons why men cannot stay home and provide childcare. The three most important are that A, most men don't want to provide child care. That's out of nowhere, based on nothing. Now somebody's going to throw out some data that they heard of, or <laughs> don't you know? Meanwhile, we're not talking just of what is based on a highly socially retarded group of people. For example, men raised to believe that power is to work a job he hates to earn money that someone else spends while she lives more comfortably and he dies sooner. Men don't want us to take care of kids. They want to do that. Well, they've been taught to want to do that, but we're not talking about what is the stupidest thing you could convince a man to do? That. And we've taught them to want to do that. So how hard would it be in, this, in the sense of well, let's let women work and men will provide childcare. No, most men don't want to do that. Well, not now. They want to be absolutely idiotic masochists who work a job they hate to buy things they don't need to provide money to someone who doesn't respect them, who lives longer while he dies sooner so he can impress people he doesn't like. If you can convince someone to do that, which we have, you can convince them to want to take care of kids. Just look at Mexican men. Uh, B. Most women don't want to work to support a man. Again, that's just out of nowhere. And we're not talking about, I mean, when you have men emotionally crippled by social engineering to believe that nonsense, that that's their goal, that watching other people play sports is like a lifetime hobby, that kind of man 
no, a woman or a man won't really want to fund and take care of that kind of a man. But just like this working a job you hate to buy shit you don't need and provide somebody who doesn't respect you so they live more comfortably and they live and they and you die sooner. That's not how it's sold. It's sold sweet, nurturing person who helps you through life and plenty of women do. So you take the worst case scenario, which is a man with that kind of insane mentality of no matter what, if she's dickless, the best looking dickless person I can get with my money and my looks. I'm going to fund them no matter how self-destructive that is. That kind of spiritual shell? No, nobody wants to support that man. However, you can absolutely socialize women to value a career and value having somebody making their day-to-day -day work on paper, a house husband. So, it's another logical fallacy. In the C... Doing so, this is the reasons why a man can't stay home and provide childcare. See, doing so significantly increases the probability that his wife will stop being attracted to him and his marriage will fail. A little more of this. A woman simply out earning her husband increases the risk of divorce by 50%. And then there's a link to that. And we'll just accept for the sake of argument that correlation implies causation. And we'll accept for the sec sake of argument that she was ever attracted to him and not his support so when we say the woman will stop being attracted to him and the marriage will fail no what you're really saying is that if you don't have a woman wageless she won't be under your economic thumb and since that's the only thing holding your marriage together is her social her lack of social viability economic viability then your marriage will fail so said another way, a woman out earning a man increases divorce by 50% is more than 50% of marriages only exist because the woman doesn't have another economic option. So if the goal is simply to have helpless women grudgingly attached to men that they don't respect or love, then yeah, it would, this would follow. That was the goal. This implies, so all that stuff, implies that it is untenable to expect women to be willing to completely support their families. You know, meanwhile, there's single mothers who do it. And yes, feel free to pretend like I'm an advocate of single mothers or think every single mother is necessarily a good person. Show me some anecdotal evidence of a single mother doing something terrible like I don't know about that. Meanwhile, there are single mothers who will do it just themselves. So the idea that single mothers, it's untenable to expect a, um, a woman would be willing to financially support her family while a man does the nurturing at home, it just simply doesn't follow. But certainly, if there are women who dream of marrying men who will stay home and play video games with children while they're at work, while the women are at work, 60 hours per week to support the family, there's no reason why they should be barred from doing so. So again, it's the, that one I'll actually say it's a straw man, a weak argument saying that somebody's advocating that there are women who want to work hard as fuck while men stay home and play video games. That's probably not the person, what the person was advocating. Like any foolish stay at home type life. Just like you don't tell men, hey, work a job you hate to buy shit you don't need to fund a woman who stays home and watches garbage ass daytime television. That'd be a harder sell. That happens a lot. But it'd be a harder sell. So we're not talking about, is a woman willing to work 60 hours for some lazy idiot? We're talking about, is a woman willing to be the financial provider and have a stay-at-home companion? And, and, and uh, then there's one more sentence. <coughs> and I'll get to that in a second. This is the overall tone, though. This is just foolish, a bunch of fallacies. Uh, some tongue-in-cheek stuff, misrepresentations here, there, and the other, and then a bunch of bald assertions, um, begged questions. This is nonsense. And actually, let me finish this one more question, then I'll wrap this up, explaining how it's nonsense and explaining how comment sections, the human beings that have been stupefied by socialization, when I say comment sections, those human beings should not be thinking, well, Danielle didn't prove him wrong, she simply said he was insensitive. You're proving the point that a reasonable point, like uh, you shouldn't socialize people to think it's okay to rape. That'd be insensitive. 
Oh, well, you didn't prove the utilitarianism wrong. And as I've more or less demonstrated above, yeah, it wouldn't even be, it would, there wouldn't be utility to it. You'd have people like me. I'm here doing politics right now because I can't do kinesiological things because I got jerked over in family court. So I'm spending my time doing philosophy stuff when I should be doing massage therapy as I used to, personal training as I used to. But imagine, like I said, you socialize people to believe they can rape my kids, rape people's kids. That's going to be my lifetime. I'll be like, well, got to make just enough ends meet so I can be around and teach my kids how to you know, fight off rapists. It wouldn't be utility. Uh, so the last sentence, I tend to doubt there are enough of these hardworking snowflakes, women, dork, to be of any statistical, let alone demographic, significance to society. So, again, this is that MLA over critical thinking. Statistical, let alone demographic. No, statistical was enough. And if you weren't busy trying to sound smart versus actually thinking critically, you'd know statistical significance would be enough. You don't think, I tend to doubt there are enough of these hardworking snowflakes. It's just garbage. And see, this is more what I do. Other people, Danielle is an example, but other people, they don't even know where to start with this stuff. Like, holy shit. Well, I'll just take out one sentence where he said it's worse to have women working than it is to socialize men to rape. And I'll just say that was insensitive because I don't have time to, I mean, this is a mess. Where do I start? Me? This is that thing I do. It just gets easier and easier. As soon as I read this, I had all that stuff I said in my mind. I'm just like, well, what's the most accessible way to explain this? Expe accessible way to explain who my target audience is and all this? I just, I can see this nonsense for what it is because I've been seeing this for a really long time. But the idea that this kind of terrible writing needs a point by point refutation, which I've given. And of course, this won't be enough. Of course, people will, well, if you're doing, what about this? this? Of course, this won't even be enough. So imagine socializing someone, Danielle is an example, like socializing them to be neurotic enough to believe it's not enough just to say, wow, that's really insensitive to say that about rape victim men and women that, you know, that's not as bad as women at work. Socialize them to be so neurotic. That's not enough. You should go point by point and you should you know, beg to be taken serious by an audience of, of idiots who say, well, you didn't, you didn't address this point. Therefore, you know, rape is better than women working. In debate, we just call this prima facie. On its face, this shit is nonsense, simply put. So um, feel free to go back to sleep. <laughs>